Hi, good morning, Chris. Hi, Erica, how are you? I am great. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Um, well, hello all. Um, my name is Erica Lamb. I'm your 2020 president for the Reno Sparks Association of Realtors. And I'd like to thank you for joining me for another episode of Conversations with the President. Today, my guest is Mr. Chris Bishop. He is your 2020 president for Nevada Realtors. And um, I know I already said good morning, but good morning, Chris. And, and good morning thank again. You for joining us. <laughs> Glad to be here. Glad to be seen. Uh, it's just really incredible, and it would actually be nice to see you in person. But uh, <laughs> things are a little different this year. But I'm I'm optimistic that you know in a few months we'll have that opportunity again. Absolutely. So, um, Chris has joined me today so we can talk about how we as members can support Governor Sisolak's directive in regards to open houses by using best practices virtual technology, and how the state is working on our behalf to keep us working during this time. Um, so Chris, can you talk about the work the State Association has been conducting on members' behalf with the State of Nevada and Governor Sisolak to help us maintain an essential status? Absolutely. So thank you again for having me, Erica. Um, a lot has been going on, and I know that we now live in a virtual world that we're having to survive in as realtors. Uh, but the good news is uh, the governor did deem our business an essential business. So um, your dues dollars are at work, and your PSF contributions have helped us with our lobbying team uh, to be able to lobby the governor to maintain the real estate industry as an essential business. And I'm sure you can understand that there are so many small businesses that are out there, so many other industries that are not allowed to conduct business. And so... Uh, many of them are suffering as, as we've seen. And so the, the good thing for our members is that we're able to continue to maintain our ability to work and sell homes. And I wanna remind everybody, you know, what we do as realtors is essential, but the way that we do it is what needs to change. And I think that we've all noticed that, you know, the governor does not want us conducting open houses. He does not want us putting people in close quarters together. And I think we should do everything we can um, to, to adhere to the COVID-19 risk mitigation factors that he's outlined. And I'll talk about those just a, a little bit to give you an idea. Um, of course, when you're working with a buyer or a seller, um, we have many agents that have now gone to Zoom or other uh, platforms such as this to be able to communicate with their client without being face-to-face. -face. And that definitely was a change for me in my business as I always like to you know, give that firm handshake and smile and, and show them that I'm a real person and this is what I do for a living. Um, one of the things that we, we've told anyone showing buyers is to make sure you're not putting the buyer in your vehicle. Uh, best for them to follow you or meet you at the property. If uh, possible, make sure the seller uh, could leave the property so you're not putting a buyer and seller in close contact together. And then, you know, be cognizant that you're entering someone's home and make sure that you're not touching all the doorknobs and, you know, leaving um, stuff behind. And anything that you can do to virtually show the property first is actually listed in those uh, risk mitigation factors. So if you're at your uh, computer and you're able to show the buyer photos of the home rather than actually taking them to the, the home, uh, that would be a good first step. Um, I know a lot of agents are doing virtual walking tours of properties that they're able to send out to another agent to show their client what it would look like to actually walk through the property. Any of those things that you can do will show the governor that we're serious about our industry and we're serious about following his guidelines. Unfortunately, um, you know, recently we've had a number of issues that have come up from uh, bad apples. There's no other way to say it. People that just don't seem to care about what uh, the implementations have been and they're just willing to go out there and risk it all. And I think that the concern for me is that, you know, when those messages get back to the governor, that could shut down our business as essential. And so we're walking a very fine line and it's gonna be up to each one of us to police ourselves and our industry and to make sure that all realtors are doing what they can to support the community. Um, the other side of the coin is that I have seen such an outpouring of goodwill and help by our realtor members. There's no one more caring than realtors. And um, I've seen them out there helping um, people shop. They've been out helping uh, people with necessities and needs and, you know, even just helping small businesses by trying to point out, you know, that we need these uh, services to come back and we need these businesses to come back to keep our community strong. So uh, thank you for all that you're doing to progress that up in the northern part of the state. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I, I, I honestly believe 
and um, that when this is all said and done, that we're going to come out of this a lot stronger because there are so many that are coming together to help each other during this time. Absolutely. Um, and I um, would say it's going to be a new normal. Uh, the way that a, a realtor conducted business before uh, the COVID-19 crisis and after will be two different stories. And I think that we've already seen a lot of brokers that have conformed their business practices, such as sales meetings. Uh, if you would have told me that I wouldn't be doing in-person sales meetings, I would have laughed at you because that's the time I get to see my agents interact with them. And now we're seeing that, you know, virtual sales meetings are a hit. Uh, people like the ability to get that information in a way that makes sense to them. And we've seen hundreds of agents actually tie into virtual meetings where usually you'd only get 70 or 80 in your office. That's incredible. Well, thank you. Um, now, you and a team at Nevada Realtors have been very busy and thank you for being our advocates um, for the state. That brings us to our next point, best practices for conducting business during these times. Um, you know, what tools should we be using to conduct business during this time that will help us protect Nevadans and protect all the efforts of Nevada realtors in the state to keep us working? So first off, I have to give a, a shout out to Teresa McKee, our CEO. She's done an amazing job of keeping the state functional. Imagine, you know, not having an office that you could go to and having your staff in remote locations. And she's managed to make it look seamless. And I can tell you, uh, everyone is working harder than they were before this all happened. And I really appreciate the efforts of our uh, state association staff. Not only that, I, I really have to thank Rocky Fenseth and the staff at Carrera Nevada. Um, they have gone above and beyond working late uh, hours, burning the candle at both ends to make sure that we're well informed. Um, the good news is on a state and national level, uh, the National Association of Realtors at Realtor.org has provided a, a wealth of information and tools that you can utilize that talk about best practices, um, uh, things that you would want to know as far as federal guidelines and federal programs that have been rolled out and how they're trying to get stimulus money to small business owners just like us. And so you definitely want to check out Realtor.org. You'll see it right on the front page. Of course, it's front of mind with everyone right now. Um, the issue that NER is looking at is you know, there will be a lot of members that won't be able to survive um, this whole issue. And, and of course, when we have a hot market like we were just in nationally, we had a huge influx of members. And probably what we're going to see is we're going to see some of those members reconsider real estate as a career, which is understandable with everything going on. Um, and then, you know, we'll probably see a little bit of a drop in membership. So they have some information on that and what it'll mean for all of us. On our um, NevadaRealtors.org uh, webpage, we've compiled a a list of state information packets, such as the governor's executive order, if you wanted to read exactly what the terms say. Uh, we do have a FAQ on um, just generic questions that every agent or broker would have about what this means to them. So definitely check that out. And we have sent those out also by email. So please, please make sure that you're getting the Nevada Realtors emails. If you're not, please reach out to the Nevada Association of Realtors staff so that they can make sure that you're included in those because literally we're sending things out weekly. And then at the end of a few weeks, we like to recap it all into one concise email so that you have another place to go to for good information. Um, literally, things are changing in our state on a daily basis. And so we're trying to keep everyone informed. And I'm really proud of all of the local association presidents, such as yourself, that have gone out of their way to do videos just like this to keep members engaged and in the know of what's going on. And so it's so cool to see, um, you know, all of our realtor family pulling together to help each other out. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, you had mentioned the Nevada Realtors website. Um, do you have that website address for us and any other yeah. web addresses that you think would be critical? The Nevada Realtors site is nevadarealtors.org. Um, you can uh, hop on there. You do need a login for some of the information. Um, it's your nerds number and the password that you've set up. Um, of course, realtor.org is our National Association of Realtors site, not realtor.com, realtor.org. And their information is also listed there right on the front page. I do want to point out that we have our legal information hotline. We know that because of everything that's going on, we've had a number of transaction issues and things that have caused our members some uh, pain and that they're trying to work out to keep buyer and seller both engaged. I do want to point out we are still doing a lot of business throughout the state, both in the north and the south. So there are a lot of transactions happening. There are a lot of uh, cancellations that have happened as well, where we've had some earnest money disputes and some, you know, uh, concerns over the contract and state law. And, you know, of course, the COVID-19 addendums and what do they mean and force majeure and all those good clauses. So the legal information hotline number for an agent to reach out to is 
1-800-748-6999. Again, that's 1-800-748-6999. And we also have a broker information hotline. So if you're a broker uh, in Nevada and uh, you want some information or you need some legal counsel, um, we have a broker hotline that's uh, one 503 8507. Again, that's 1 877 503 8507. And if you're looking for those numbers because you can't remember that I said them on the video, just go to nevadarealtors.org and click on legal information hotline, and Tiffany and her amazing group will be happy to help you out. Okay, thank you. That's wonderful resources. Um, Chris, is there anything else you'd like to let our members know about before we um, close this video for now? Yeah, I think the, the whole thing comes back to me that, you know, at the heart of our, our realtor code of ethics is the, the preamble that says, you know, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And I think that uh, realtors are doing everything they can to be extremely positive in the marketplace. And they're doing what they can to help their clients and their community. And, you know, while no one wants to be shut down or have their business limited or, you know, their incomes threatened, um, we survive based on the success of our clients. And keeping them safe, health, healthy, and happy um, is what every realtor is striving to do. And so that's why, you know, these orders from the governor are so important that we follow them and so important that we go out of our way uh, to maintain that social distancing to keep them healthy and to keep our members healthy. And so just want to make sure that if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to myself or Teresa McKee, our CEO. We're happy to help in any way. And as you hear of issues out in the marketplace that we need to address or best practices that we need to look into, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you, Chris. And thank, thank you for you. taking the time to talk to me today. Happy to do it. Thanks so much for all you do. Thanks. Um, I would like to thank our members for joining us today. We hope that you found our time together as informative as I did. And I hope you'll join us later this week when we talk with Diane Aruza from Nevada Rural Housing Authority on another episode of Conversations with the President. Have a wonderful day.